everyone. Thanks so much. Um, we're going to start with just a few questions. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Esther CCTV. Thank you, Zhou Yun of China Central TV. And I'd like to raise a question to Secretary Liu. And now both China and the United States are going through some economic changes. China is making structural reform, and the United States is trying to revitalize its uh, manufacture to uh, increase jobs. So under this unique circumstance, how do you think China and the United States can be more mutually complementary in economic cooperation? And a follow-up question on that. I can't, I'm sorry. No, I, I could hear right, right till the end. Okay, and a follow-up question on that is that what specific measures will the U.S. side take to further loosen its restrictions on export of high-tech goods for civil use in China? Thank you. I think uh, the, the U.S. economy um, is in such a different place now than it was just four years ago. Um, we're growing, uh, and uh, we're, we have prospects for continued growth, and um, you know, we would like the growth to be faster, uh, but uh, but I think that the, this set of meetings, as many of the meetings that I've had in recent months, have had this character to them, that there's a renewed um, uh, recognition and respect for the resilience of the American economy, and uh, with all of its problems, the resilience of the American political system, because we responded in a decisive way to the economic crisis, and our economy is back. Now, I think that the, the lessons from this are that change is hard, and you have to make changes uh, to get your economy uh, where it needs to be. And you don't get there all at once. So we'd like to be growing more, and we'd like unemployment to come down more. I think one of the messages that we had uh, in these meetings and that we heard back from the Chinese was that they're committed to change, uh, that it's a long process, uh, that they need, they they know they need more market-oriented uh, uh, features to their economy, uh, and uh, we need to open markets to each other. Uh, we welcome Chinese investment in the United States. We welcome the opportunity to have U.S. investment in China, uh, and the th agreements that we reached at these meetings reflect uh, the importance of open markets. The uh, the dis decision made by China to enter into the negotiations over a, a, a bit, a, 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 an investment treaty, uh, with the kind of uh, uh, features that they're willing to accept, shows a commitment to opening markets, uh, which is so important uh, to our exporters. I think one of the reasons that these discussions uh, were so significant is that we are pushing hard for China to do things that China needs to do for itself. And uh, it shows that there's an overlap of interests that as China moves, toward, moves towards more openness in its uh, exchange rates and its interest rates and its economic system, it's going to mean more growth in China and more opportunity for U.S. exports to China. It's a win-win. And uh, we are, I think, in a place now where, as the two largest economies in the world, we have to have these kinds of conversations because the world economy needs for us to be working in that kind of cooperation. Hi, uh, this is Anna Yukonana from Reuters. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I was wondering if you could just uh, elaborate a little bit more about the auditing agreements and whether you think this resolves some of the long-standing SEC issues, um, having this sharing of auditor documents. And second, if you could just give some more specifics about exchange rates. You said you see signs of progress if there's anything specific that China promised to do. Thank you very much. The, um, the, the exchange of audit information has been a, a very significant issue f uh, that our um, market regulators have needed access to uh, the kind of information that was not forthcoming. And we'd had long discussions about the provision of that information. So the decision to make the information available permits our market regulators to do their job. Ultimately, if we're going to have the kind of relations uh, between the United States and China that permit easy access to each other's markets, it requires a kind of transparency so that there can be confidence that uh, the rules of the road are being followed and that a level playing field is really available um, to all. So I think it is important. Uh, it's a rather technical issue, but it's an important uh, step in the road. 
Uh, and um, on, on exchange rates, we had extensive discussions uh, as we have on each of the occasions when I've engaged with uh, our Chinese counterparts. And you know, we have acknowledged that there has been progress in closing the gap, um, but we've also made it clear that there's still more progress that needs to be made in, t in order to reach the point where there's truly a market-determined uh, interest rate. Uh, you know, I think we, we, we've made progress. We still have some more work to do. Um, Secretary Burns, can I ask you about North Korea? Um, the State Councillor mentioned that uh, China was committed to creating the conditions for the early resumption of the six-party talks. Do you agree upon what those conditions are? Do, does China share the view of the US that North Korea has to take concrete steps to show its commitment to denuclearization before talks can restart? Or, or does China think that talks should start now without preconditions? Well, I think obviously our Chinese colleagues can speak for themselves on this, but what I would say is the following. Um, first, uh, the issue of North Korea was a very high priority um, throughout the course of the last two days of discussions. Um, and I think there was a strong reaffirmation from both sides of our commitment to verifiable denuclearization. Uh, and to meaningful steps on the part of the DPRK to demonstrate its seriousness, because I think neither the United States nor China are interested in talks simply for the sake of talks. Um, and so I think much as was the case when our two presidents met in California, much as was the case when Secretary Kerry traveled to Beijing in April, um, I think there's a, a very strong uh, consensus between us on the significance of this issue on the importance of the United States and China working together uh, to ensure that the DPRK lives up to its obligations uh, and translates uh, rhetoric and prior commitments um, into uh, reality, uh, into the kind of meaningful steps that I think both of us understand are essential to make real diplomatic progress. The final question will be for Bing Ru Wang from Phoenix TV. Thank you, Jane. Um, hi, Secretary Burns and Secretary Liu. Uh, I have two broad questions. The first one is, before the SNED, a State Department official said they want to ask China to define the new type major country relationship. Now, after the SNED, what's your understanding of it? And um, are you ready to answer China's call? Secondly, um, Yesterday at the background briefing, um, one official described Wang Yang. He found him very, uh, found him a, a good sense of humor. So I'm wonder, what's your impression of your counterparts? Do they give you strong confidence to strengthen the trust? Thank you. Well, I, I would say, um, starting with my visit to Beijing in March uh, and the conversations we've had since Secretary Kerry's visit uh, just a few weeks later. We have felt a, a, a change in the new uh, 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 leadership in China. I think it was reflected when the two presidents met at Sunnylands in a very uh, public way. Um, it's a new generation. Uh, there's an openness, uh, a desire to engage in a personal way and establish relationships looking ahead uh, to working with our administration for the next four years and for them looking at working with the United States for 10 years. Uh, making progress today is important, but building the kind of trust that can be the foundation for making more progress in the future is a very important part of it. Um, the, the, you know, from, from the meetings in March through the meetings today, uh, there's a willingness to put the notes aside and, and talk directly and uh, to, you know, to deal with the difficult subjects. We dealt with some very difficult subjects and we don't agree on everything. Uh, but to do it in a forthright way, in a direct way, and um, it's, that's the way one can build a relationship of trust. So I have a very positive uh, reaction myself to the, the personal uh, approach uh, of the new leadership, and uh, I think the Vice Minister uh, brought that spirit to the team uh, that he brought with him. Sorry, and I would, just, I would just add that I agree very much with Jack about the overall tone of the SNED conversations, I think reflects the maturity of the relationship that we can not only focus on 
places where we can build on areas of common ground, but also on areas of obvious difference and deal with it in a candid and honest way. I think on the personal side, Secretary Kerry has known uh, State Councilor Young for more than a decade, dating back to the State Councilor's time as ambassador in Washington. They have, I think, a very um, easy and effective personal relationship, a lot of professional respect between the two of them, and I think that contributes enormously uh, to the kinds of the dialogue that we just had over the last couple of days. Thank you very much.